All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Crash Incorporated Mega Pack, which is being released by form user Warsoul. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is some seriously beautiful sci-fi style parts, which, though they don't match my typical aesthetic that I like for this game, are just so good. Gorgeous, I had to take a look at them. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what all this does add. So let's grab ourselves a Mark I command pod for size comparison's sake, and then go to our janitor's closet mod filter, leaving on just Crash Incorporated. And we'll start here with the Atlander 3 command pod, which is pretty interesting, as it only holds two crew members, minimum required to operate, also too, but does have a built-in ablator, data transmitter, reaction wheel, crew report, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer, and is freaking gigantic. It only holds two people, but it's, it's, it's that big. So maybe, you know, use tweak scale perhaps on your mod if you download this. And, uh, but besides that, it's freaking gorgeous. I mean, this is not exactly something you'd usually think of as a command pod, but it's just so beautiful looking. And besides the looks, is quite useful with uh, a multitude of attachment points on the top, bottom, and these sides for you to, you know, connect whatever you want to it, even if it's another one of those gigantic command pods. But there we go, that the Atlander 3. Now let's head down into fuel tanks, where if we <laughs> zoom out more, we'll take a look at these pretty quickly here. So first we have the D line of tanks here, where they all have have liquid fuel oxidizer and a built-in ablator just in various designs and sizes. So of course we have uh, the largest one up here, then sort of a thinner one, an even, even thinner and tapered one, and then one that goes even more tapered. Let's actually bring all of this. So oh, nope, it's connected to the tiny, tiny little Mark I. There we go. And then the last one that does taper out more. Now again, they all have built-in ablators and liquid fuel and oxidizer in various sizes. And look, again, gorgeous. And some serious hardcore sci-fi, which is just fun. Now then we have another series of tanks here, the 250 series. These are the 251s. And uh, again, they are liquid fuel and oxidizer tanks. Now these do not have ablators. They follow the same sort of pattern of large tank, medium tank, small tapered tank, and then not so small tapered tank. And yes, these are just for liquid fuel and oxidizer. No ablator like these ones. And then we have have, oops, pop all these off, the 252 series, which holds liquid fuel and oxidizer, but also has solar panels all around, every side for producing power. And once more in the large tank, the medium tank, the small tapered, and then a not so small tapered. There we are. Some very, very cool looking things and quite shiny with the solar panels just all over the place. Now we also have up here the Atlander 3 drop tank, which is a radially attached tank here, which of course is made to go with the Atlander. Very nice look to it, making a, uh, a already very interesting pod even more interesting. And we've got other things to hook to it later as well. So very cool there. We also have the MX-8 250SC, which is just really gigantic and kind of creepy looking fuel tank, but with a lot of attachment points on the bottom for engines, and does carry quite a lot of fuel, and has kind of an ominous evil look to it, which I quite like, frankly. We then have the R250A, which has an active radiator and just liquid fuel, so, you know, help keep your ship cool while also maintaining some fuel. We then have the TV250A here, which is just liquid fuel and oxidizer, and has information Information on the mod and uh, if you want to be a beta tester. So that's a thing. That's a thing indeed. 
And then we have a series of uh, different liquid fuel and oxidizer tanks down here, all of which have uh, five attachment points down on the bottom and just various designs and shapes and sizes for you to enjoy from long and thin to stubby to just, you know, big and small and everything in between. So a lot of fun stuff here and uh, some of them, as you can see, being a little bit more angled than others and all holding just various amounts of liquid fuel and oxidizer all just gorgeous looking look at those things they are beautiful and that's it with the fuel tank, so let's move on to engines, where we have the Atlander 3 engine. Yet another fun thing to attach to the side of this, which could, of course, you know, you can then attach a uh, fuel tank to the outside of this, as it has an attachment point on both sides, and is just a nice little powerful engine there with 180 kilonewtons of max thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer, has a built-in alternator, one degree of gimbling, and uh, all in all, pretty good. We then have the B125A, which is interesting because it can, of course, be placed in line as so and is gigantic, but can also be placed radially if you do want it on the exterior. And this is again a liquid fuel and oxidizer engine with a max thrust of 650 kilonewtons, a 320 on the ISP, two degrees gimbling range, and has its own built in fuel tank. Now let's head back to the Atlander. I forgot to mention the ISP on this one, 300 max in vacuum. Now the next engine we have is the MX-8250AB, which is just awesome. Very awesome. Look at just look at this thing. It again kind of looks a little evil and ominous, but you know, sci-fi evil, so I'm cool with it. And this one is a jet engine, producing a maximum of 4,000 kilonewtons of thrust, but requiring a lot of air intake. But it does have air intakes built into the thing. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna want to actually be up to speed before using this, which considering how massive it is, that uh, could be interesting but also does have liquid fuel and oxidizer tanks built in as well. We then have the Proto X20, which is another radially attached thing right here and is quite nice, can also be attached in line right there. And this is a liquid fuel and oxidizer engine with a max of 3000 kilonewtons of thrust with uh, 305 ISP max in atmosphere, interestingly. Oh, and actually max in atmosphere here too with 3,155. <laughs> there we go. Also has built in alternator, two degrees of gimbling and liquid fuel and oxidizer built in and is just gorgeous. All these parts are just beautiful. That's why I love this thing. And then finally, we have the X4250G tank, which looks very similar to those fuel tanks we had in the fuel tank category, but this one has an engine with built-in 1,200 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum with 310 ISP max, with built-in alternator, three degrees of gimbling, and a built-in fuel tank with liquid fuel and oxidizer. All in all, pretty good. Now that is the last part we have until we get it down to ground where we have a landing leg which is a landing leg that you can ex extend and attach of course to the Atlander and it's uh, you know it's a pretty nice looking leg as far as legs go I guess and that is the last of the parts in this lovely mega pack by Crash Incorporated so let's take a look at a kind of weird and amazing that it flies a rocket that I built earlier, the Crash Incorporated Mega Pack Rocket, which, uh, oh boy, yeah, I, st I forgot to fix the staging. Let's do that real quick. That's that. Uh, we then want you up here, and you, 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 you wait, hold on, maybe, you know, you there, and you there. I messed it up! Wait, did I mess it up? I think I messed it up. Hold on, hold on. That, and that, and then, ah, uh, yes, and then these two up here. Aha! We're good! Let's roll. Ah, <laughs> uh, staging. You'd think I'd know how to do it by now, but, yeah, yeah. It's always what I mess up on my rockets. So, first things first, we have the bottom stage of that gigantic jet engine, which, even though it's hugely powerful, cannot actually take off this rocket. This is too heavy for it to get a start, because, of course, from zero degree, or zero speed, rather, it it isn't very effective. So if we do throttle all the way up and light that baby, it just keeps on going and burning fuel. 
But, you know, for a little fun, if we do release, it becomes light enough and it'll actually catch up to us here in a moment. But we do have this other X4 tank engine here. And, oh, there it goes. It's chasing us. <laughs> I don't know why that amuses me so much, but it does. We just have a jet engine chasing us through our smoke there. Very cool. Now, uh, I don't think it should catch up to us, but let's just, you know, angle a little bit out away from it just to be on the safe side. And, yeah, a very cool little engine here. I do like this, and we have one of the just uh, D tanks here, the D Tank 250s, just holding the liquid fuel and oxidizer. And, of course, we can uh, look at the interior here, which is, as you can see, a stock interior. Nothing too special with the command pod, but, you know... It's usable, so I can roll with it. Now let's actually cut the engine here and release, and then fire the Atlander engines on the side here, which actually are surprisingly powerful little engines. You'll never get into orbit with this thing, but, you know, it does function pretty well as a lander. And all in all, a pretty amazing pack of parts. I think they're a little too large for their own good, but they are Beautifully made. Definitely not my typical style, but certainly something I have been having fun with and will continue to screw around with in the future. But yeah, that is the Crash Incorporated Mega Pack. So if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that's going to be it for today. I hope you have enjoyed. And of course that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.